Hi everyone and thanks for being with me. I've had a number of interesting comments on some of the videos that I've posted recently and I just want to talk a little bit about them and people's responses and general perceptions about what it is that I do. Now there was a really helpful comment which actually said uh, Tony is doing what he can to represent an alternate view around many of the issues that we are confronted with today. And I certainly am. And that sums up really who I am, I guess. But one of the things that does concern me is the uh, statements that people make in relation to accusations about why I do what I do and whether or not I use things like um, the worst psychologist on this planet in relation to Jordan Peterson and uh, whether I use that as clickbait. And the simple answer to that is, yes, I do. And those people that have clicked on that because of that, good for you, you've done the right thing. And I'm really pleased that you're able to indulge me by at least boosting those particular videos. The reason why I do these videos in the first place is that I believe that there should be a voice for those who sit on the other side of politics to the right. So I'm here to elevate my views in the best way that I can. And this format is the only way I've got by which I can do that. And I'm happy to confront whatever views are presented to me that are alternate views. It isn't that I sit here thinking about what my views are and entirely my views. In fact, that's so far from the truth. What I try to focus on are what other people are thinking. I spend a lot of time looking at what alternate media has to say. I spend a lot of time, in some cases probably more time, looking at what some of the extreme right-wing people are saying and deciding whether I agree with them or not. And if I disagree with them, that's when I make a video that will talk to you about my disagreements. Now, who am I? Well, actually, frankly, I'm not anybody specific or I'm not really certainly not important. I, never, I don't see myself as important and never have. I've worked so long in the social justice sphere that most of the things that I wish to focus on are basically about what is fairness and equity and what is reasonable as I see it anyway. I understand that there's many people there that will disagree with my sense of reasonableness. I believe that uh, I have a certain sense of integrity and fairness and you know what is going to benefit those people who don't usually have the rights to, or the, they have the rights but that don't necessarily have the facilities to be able to advocate for themselves. So I'm here to advocate for them. I'm here to put forward specific views that I hold, that I appreciate lots of other people don't hold, and I'm here to critique views that I disagree with. <coughs> That's simply what I do. The reason why I'm doing that at the ripe old age that I am is that uh, in retirement has given me the opportunity to focus a lot more on this particular area, and it's kind of something I enjoy doing. It's fun. I get a bit of a kick out of being able to talk to my camera and I must confess, and I'm more than happy to tell you this, that I don't necessarily find it easy to do this. Just to having a conversation with my camera and my microphone and some lights and, <clears throat> and to be able to talk to virtually what I see as nobody at this particular point until I put this up on YouTube. I've always found that experience uncomfortable. I've also found it uncomfortable, I guess, in the past, not so much now, uh, for people to criticise the work that I've done, even though in my practice as a social worker, I've been more than happy people to watch what I do and to offer an appropriate critique. I'm more than happy for people to do that to me today, but I want those critiques to be helpful, to uh, not tell me that I'm a wanker, I already know that. I want people to be able to take in what I say, critique it for what it's worth, to put forward your particular views, to justify them. 
not just to tell me that I'm wrong. I will always try and justify why it is that I think that somebody could be behaving differently. I did that with Jordan Peterson and many people disagreed with my take on Peterson and his version of Trump and his inability to be able to define the behavioural issues that Trump has that causes him to be perhaps not the best possible candidate on this planet and perhaps not the best possible person either to be wielding the power that he would wield if he happened to become the president again. There are many things in this world that I disagree with and they're not necessarily on the right. There's many things on the left that I also disagree with. I have a great deal of issue, in fact, with uh, <coughs> AUKUS and the Australian government's involvement with the United States. I have certainly, as I've posted before, I have a, uh, a strong affiliation for the Palestinian people in Gaza and how it must be for them to be bombarded to oblivion in the way that they have been. I have a complete passion and understanding for the most underprivileged individuals, not just here in Australia, but around the world. I don't offer any solutions to any of that. All I do is say, well, these are issues which have come to my attention and they're issues which I believe I have a certain view of, and this is my view. That's the best I can do. I can't convince people to see things as I see them. I don't even expect that. I know that for me doing what I'm doing now has a therapeutic aspect for myself. That there may be some people who think, well, okay, that was a reasonable perspective and I understand that. And there are some times I know that I'm pretty hard hitting, that I don't pull punches. I call things as I see them. And sometimes that may appear to be cruel, but sometimes in order to get that message across, you have to target the issue and you have to target those people that are causing the problem in and around that issue. So that's what I do. I don't make apologies for it. It's simply the way that it has to be. If someone's going to take a pick a fight with me, I am going to fight back. I'm not going to do it necessarily in ways which are destructive in other person because I won't do that but I'll do it in ways which are certainly letting you know exactly how I feel about that person and their behaviour. There are many signs in this world that things aren't going all that well. That in fact, the world itself is deteriorating into a hodgepodge of continual warfare, disagreement, hate and resentment for others. And I'll push back upon that whenever I can. I don't wish to propagate hate. I do wish to propagate a different version of seeing people that those people who are hateful may choose to hate. I think it's important to be able to analyse the conversations that people have and then say whether or not those conversations firstly are based on fact and whether they're hateful. The one thing that I think we as humans have never learned, and I learned this when I ran uh, domestic violence courses for many years, one of those issues that I have learned and that I feel very strongly about is that we've never ever as a society, as human beings, never been able to deal with the need to have to be violent towards others in order to win a fight. And I'm not just talking about the macro level wars and the disputes that we have around the world. I'm also talking about the disputes we have with each other, um, particularly the disputes that couples might have when trying to sort out disagreements or that couples might have when one person wishes to be more authoritarian and more powerful than the other. To me, they're the real issues that need to be sorted as well. Not just looking at those worldviews, but looking at the individual issues that happen and how 
we can actually find ways to resolve them. In the 30 years that I've been working as a therapist and doing in particular work with couples in terms of relationships and domestic violence, family violence in general, it has astounded me how little the world has changed. How for whatever reason, we cannot find better ways of being. The conflict often seems to be the answer to most of the problems. That yelling and screaming and shouting and dropping bombs on people, people believe solves the problem. Where what we need to try and understand is that it's through peaceful means that we bring about not just a better sense of humanity, but we resolve issues. Issues which have caused us to have intergenerational feelings of hate and dislike for a certain other group of people. Where for generations we have delved into our histories which have told us that for whatever reason, these group of people are people that we should not trust. You know, people aren't born hateful. That the day a child is born, they're as innocent as you could imagine. It isn't until we start feeding that body with hateful, disrespectful, prejudicial beliefs that that child starts to conjure up hateful, prejudicial beliefs. And if we could find a way for that not to happen, start to educate ourselves to be more conciliatory, more understanding, more peaceful, then perhaps we might be able to find a way to solve the world's problems entirely. Now, one of the things I think that we can do is start to experience what peace, what gentleness, what love, what consideration for others actually means. And we can experience that in our lives now. And if we're young enough and we've got kids that are young enough, we can start experiencing that and passing it on to them. For those of us who have got hate and resent resentment towards others, then we need to find a way to understand what it would be like not to have that hate or resentment in our lives. What it would be like to feel compassion for others as opposed to hating them. And it's not all that difficult to do. You know, there are many people in this world who hate another group of people, but never really had a conversation with them, never understood what their world views are like and they themselves many of them I guess that you, these people are hating have never had their conversations with the hater either and so to be able to find ways to indulge yourself in conversations with those people whom you are judging is often very helpful I also think one needs to evaluate where their views and ideas come from when I was growing up, I had a family that was uh, extreme in their views on the right of politics. Well, not extreme, it's very conservative, let's put it that way. And I had some views about the world when I was in my mid to late 20s that when I reflect on now, I'm horrified to think that I had them at all. But I did. And when I proceeded uh, in my late 30s in particular to uh, reevaluate my views when I went back to university, I then discovered that there was a part of me that was in conflict with those views that I was raised with. That there was something in me that said that the way I was thinking about the world was not helpful and particularly the way I was thinking about others. And so I took upon myself to change the way I was thinking. Surprisingly enough, it wasn't all that hard for me. There was 
an innate side of me, I guess, that wanted to see the world as a, a more functioning world, that I wanted to see people or the good qualities, the, the positives that sit in people as opposed to their negatives. And once I started to do that, through my study and through my practice, it became easier to see people that way. It doesn't mean that you get taken advantage of either, but it does mean that you can find better ways to work with people to resolve problems, as opposed to popping them into a box and a category which says that, no, I can't go in there, that's not possible to resolve that problem, these people are too far gone, whatever. If you take a non-judgmental approach to individuals, you'll find that there are pathways to better understand where they're coming from and to be able to help them navigate those pathways as well. So there are many things I think that we can do that are different and my biggest frustration is that as I get older and particularly at the age that I am now, when I look back and I think how much effectiveness have I been in the community, I can't gauge it because it's not possible to gauge the number of people you're successful with and those that you're not. But I guess the important thing is that if you've done what you consider to be the best, if, if you've made significant changes in your life, if you've changed certain values that you've had, if you've been able to adapt to those changes, and if you believe that they've been effective and you feel better for all of that, in other words, it doesn't become a continual struggle, that is simply a pathway that you ease into and you accept, then the outcomes are probably going to be better than had you stayed the way you were. So, the reason why I do these videos is because I want a better world. I want a better world for you and for my family and my grandchildren and my grandchildren. That's why I do what I do. This isn't I've never made this about, I don't make, I can't, can't make it about money because, you know, I've only got 200 odd subscribers. So it's, it's gonna take a long time to get to that 1,000. So it's never about money. It is about providing an opportunity for me to say what I need to say in a way which is generally respectful, even though there are people that will object to some of the name calling that I do when I get really upset with people. Um, I accept that, but that is my intent is not to hurt people. I don't hit down. If I'm going to hit anywhere, I hit up for those people that have got power, that have got authority, justified or not, who make decisions or say things that's going to impact you and I. And if I disagree with them, I will let you know. If I agree with them, I will also let you know what aspects of the, that whatever they're saying or their behaviour that I do agree with. This program, The Tony Tonkin Show, is about my values, it's about my beliefs, it's about what I think is important, and I just wish to continue to share them with you. Thanks for viewing this, take care, look after yourselves, and above all, be safe.